Essential business writing skills, and this rewrite module deals with visual appeal. Remember, we're going to edit in this order with an eye towards completeness, then organization, then style, then correctness, and finally, visual appeal. We don't want to deal with the look of the document until we've got everything in there in the order that we want it, but now we're ready to deal with the look of the document. And don't forget, the look of the document matters. The visual appeal increases the probability that your document is going to get read and is going to be understood. We can change none of the words and just change the visual appeal and improve it. Here is the Nike report that we started with early on in this program and there I just made it better without changing a single word but just by slightly, slightly improving the visual appeal. The original document was in Calibri font 11 point, and all I did was I changed it to Times New Roman font 12 point. Further improving it will simply, without changing a single word, break it up into sections. Here I didn't change a single word, but I broke it into five sections. And then within several of the sections, broke that into smaller paragraphs without changing a word, dramatically improve the visual appeal of the document. Let me look at a bigger document. Now here's a document that I didn't change the words, but I went in and added some sections and some nonverbal elements. So I broke it into sections, broke it into smaller paragraphs, had little headers for the paragraphs, put some charts and graphs and tables in and dramatically improve the visual appeal without changing a single word. Okay, let's let's get at a few of those issues and let's start with font choice. I prefer Times New Roman. 12 point, almost everyone will agree that 12 point is your optimal font size. What I would suggest you do is go ahead and Google best font choices just to see what your options are. Now interestingly enough after I had already put this slide together that said I prefer Times New Roman and 12 point and then I googled best font choices and here we go. Another important factor is the readability of a letter is the font. The generally accepted font is Times New Roman size 12. Although other fonts such as Arial may be used when choosing a font, always consider your audience. If you're writing to a conservative company, you may want to use Times New Roman. This begs the question, well, isn't this going to mean my document's going to look like everybody else's? Not necessarily. It means it's not going to stick out in terms of having an unusual font. But by all means, go ahead and look at some other font choices out there as well. With regard to size, I would definitely stick with 12. Okay, let's look at some of those formatting devices that are then going to make your document uh, better. This is simply the formatting ribbon across the top. Of course, you know bold, italics, and underscore you don't want to overdo these. Uh, a little bit of formatting uh, helps a lot. Excessive formatting makes your document look almost cartoonish. With regard to justification, a lot of people will immediately jump to the, oh, I'm going to have full justification. In other words, if you see where the red circle is there, everything lines up perfectly on the left side, everything lines up perfectly on the right side. Boy, it looks like a magazine. It looks like a book that has been professionally typeset isn't that professional looking. And a lot of times, and it does look very professional looking, but a lot of times people are surprised to find out that it's actually easier to read if you have left justification with the jagged right edge. This is your preferred justification for most business documents. If it's a more formal document, if it's a, a business plan or, or a business review, you want it to be a more formal document, then yes, go with the full justification on both sides. But otherwise, the left justification with the jagged right edge. Bullets are great 
for lists and bullets can be easily read uh, and glanced at and so anytime you've got three or more things it's probably a good idea to put them in bullets you've got an infinite number of bullets i wouldn't go wild with your unique bullet choices i would pretty much stick with kind of the basic ones bullets are going to be the default unless you're going to go with a numbered list if the order is important now the order could be important because it's a chronological order or it's order of importance but other than that you're going to want to stick with the bullets sometimes you're going to want to indent bullets so you've got sub levels if you will so that's what these will do they're, they're indenting format painter if you've got a good format that you like no need to spend a lot of time uh, uh, creating that format again and again and again simply take your format painter paint on an existing format that you like and then paint that onto other parts of the document margins uh, a good idea is to stick with kind of the basic one inch all the way around i never like to go with more than one inch the only rationale i would have for that is if you're going to have this thing bound or three hole punched you want to give a wider margin where it's going to be bound uh, and then of course it means if it's going to be printed on two sides you need to get in with the different margin on the left and the different margin on the right if it's simply going to be printed on one side then of course you would just be dealing with the left margin sometimes i will go smaller than one inch if i'm trying to a lot of times i might have something that barely spills onto a second page and i want to get it down to one page so i'll go slightly smaller than that but general one inch all the way around the so-called normal margins is a good idea paragraph length you know we talked about paragraph length back when we were talking about style and that's when we talked about the flesh kincaid readability scale and turning on your readability statistics to see how you're doing paragraph length makes your writing more conversational easier to read if you have those targets but it also greatly improves the visual appeal also greatly improving the visual appeal is the use of sections break your document up into sections it just makes it easier for the reader to read another visual appeal issue is what's called orphans now what is an orphan i've got an example there uh, from my microsoft document you see at the bottom of the page there it says microsoft corporation current sales snapshot and then there's nothing there then it turns over to the next page you don't want that you don't want a section heading with nothing below it and so microsoft has created this nice little tool in the paragraph section you can go into paragraph line and page breaks and if you'll notice right at the top there at pagination widow orphan control and that will then prevent those section headings which are known as orphans at the bottom of the page uh, headers and footers are great when you want the exact same thing on the top of every page or at the bottom of every page the top of every page of course is the header the bottom of every page is the footer so you go into the insert ribbon and there over uh, towards the right is header and footer let's look at headers first i uh, decided i'll just grab that very very top one where it says blank and you type in and whatever you type there it will be on the left side if you want it in the middle you could try that blank three column and just use the one in the middle and so on uh, i like to put a page number at the bottom of the page and so I'll just go with page number, bottom of page. And if I click on bottom of page there, it will ask me, do I want it in the right, the left, or the center? I just like to do it in the center, so I'll go there. Now here you see I've put the header, Microsoft Analysis Fall 2016. If you're looking really, really closely at that screen, you can see that that's a little bit fainter. What that means is I only typed it in once in the header, but now it's going to be on the top of every single page. If you look at the, the red arrow down at the bottom there, you see page number one. And then as I click through the document, you see there's the bottom of page one and then the top of page two. Same header, Microsoft Analysis Fall 2016. The bottom of page two and the top of page three. The bottom of page three and the top of page four, and so on and so forth. All you have to do is create that header and footer once. And then it automatically goes onto every page. That can really improve the visual appeal of your uh, document. Now, some other nonverbal elements charts and graphs to visually show numbers, uh, pictures for a visual, obviously, diagrams for certain types of schematics. 
and screen captures when you want to show things that were from your computer. All of those can dramatically improve the look of your document. Because charts, graphs, and tables are so important for dealing with numbers, where we've got our own separate video module on that. But that will do it for this module on Visual Appeal.